I hate when my favorite fighters lose, man. I wanted Izzy to win this so bad. I wanted him to win this for his legacy. I mean, he was the better MMA fighter up until the point the fight got stopped. In my opinion, I think it was slightly early stoppage. But I mean, the, the ref did a good job, stopped it when, you know, he wasn't defending himself. So I'll give him that. But man, Perea. I texted my boy Juan. I'm going to put the, the text message right here. Bing. I texted. I was like, yo, Izzy's up 3-1. But it's scary because Perea got power. Like, you cannot. He has the the X factor. Or I, the left hook. The left hook. You know, he got power, bro. This dude, this dude looked humongous also. I was like, what the heck? He looks so much bigger than Izzy. He looked big but i think he gained like 20 pounds after the weigh-ins what's next for izzy i think the rematch is probably best you know he was a champion for a while and, i mean you gotta give him respect and give him the rematch but i was thinking i was like man if they don't go the izzy route who do you give perea whitaker and to be honest we saw perea's ground game i mean i'm not saying he can't approve or that that wasn't maybe his best showcase on the ground, but hey, I think I think Whitaker got him. Whitaker's fast, fast man, and um, he'll get him thinking. But the size difference, the power and size difference, he got the X factor. I guarantee you, when you see Whitaker versus Pere, it's gonna look crazy because I he he's that dude's a statue. You got Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler. That was a great, entertaining fight. I had Dustin Poirier winning. Um, it kind of went how I thought it was gonna go. But man, Michael Chandler is entertaining as hell. Every fight is just a banger. But I mean, it's kind of to his detriment. I'm not a fighter. I never fought in a cage. I can't critique somebody's fight IQ. But I mean, you know, the guy just goes out there and actually puts on a show. And uh, it's the same thing with Dustin Poirier. Michael Chandler and Dustin Poirier are both in weird positions. I think Michael Chandler's 3-3, three and three, I believe, um, since he came to UFC. I mean, he has title aspirations, but, I mean, he can't seem to get over that hump and, you know, beat the guys he needs to beat to, you know, get pushed. The UFC's been putting money behind Michael Chandler, so they definitely want to put him in title contention, but he got to win the fights. And with Dustin Poirier, he already fought all the top guys. I think the only one maybe, uh, I, I believe, is Benil Darius. And I believe that's the fight to make. Dustin Poirier, Benil, that's an interesting, that's an interesting fight. But Neil's been looking amazing, so that's definitely interesting. As far as Michael Chandler, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not really sure what they're going to do with him. Yeah, I, I really don't know. I, I'll, I'll leave that to the UFC, the matchmakers in the war room. Um, It'll be nice to see him and Dan Hooker again. As far as Dan Hooker, I was looking at the rankings. I'm like, what's the best fight to make for Dan Hooker? I'm watching, I'm, I'm looking at the rankings, I was like, Hmm, you know, you got you got some guys that he already fought. I was like, wait a minute. Ben Hooker's a big name. He's on a bumpy, like, record as far as winning streaks and losing streak goals. And then I saw he was close to Conor McGregor. I was like, wait a minute. That's a great fight because... You get Conor McGregor, Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker got the name, and he kind of got the validity of, like, oh, he's a top contender. Conor beats Dan Hooker. Great. If uh, Dan Hooker beats Conor McGregor, great. Like, I feel like it's a win-win for everyone. He's, like, he's kind of in a weird spot also. So the, the lightweight division is kind of held up, especially now with Volkanovski and Islam. Man, that's going to be a banger, too. Actually, man. The more I think about this fight, the more I'm like, I don't know who's going to win. I really don't know. I mean, you could probably, most people probably going to say Islam. He's the bigger guy. He hasn't shown any signs of, like, not being the guy. You know what I mean? Like, he's dominating people on the ground, on the feet, and everything. But, man, Volkanovski's so damn good. And I called this. I called this. I don't... I think I have receipts. I'll, I'll find the receipts where I... Actually, I don't know. Because I think I said it on Twitch. But I said... Volkanovski was gonna, I, I thought he was gonna finish Max Holloway. He didn't end up finishing him. He has the, the, the legendary chin, you know, you can't, you can't end Max Holloway. But I did see this dominance against uh, Max Holloway. I don't know why. I got a weird gut feeling. I, I couldn't tell you exactly why. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Islam, Volkanovski. If I had to pick right now at this very second, I'm picking Volkanovski just because he showed me what he can do. You know, he showed me against Brian Ortega. He got heart. He got heart. If he's in a bad position, he's getting out of there and he's coming back swinging. He showed me he's levels above the striking. He improvements. He looks fast. He's strong. He looks dominant. But same for it. Yo, it's interesting. 
I think that's the best fight. People hate the fight. I'm going to say this. Actually, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, people are like, oh, Benil Dariush uh, should be fighting for the title, this, that, and the third. I'm in a minority, right? I believe the UFC needs to make the biggest fight with the biggest names for the most for the most amount of money as possible. It's a business at the end of the day, you know? Benil Dariush, yes, amazing, great fighter. Definitely should be fight in title con contention soon. But, man, this is a business, bro. How do you not promote Volkanovski? Like, that's a great thing. Volkanovski, double champ. He's, he's aiming for greatness. Islam Makhachev, dominant. He dominated the champion who was dominating everybody else. Think about that. That's that's great promo. Interesting fight. Like, you don't know who's going to win. You know, like, it's one of those fights. It's not like, you know, I don't like to bring up boxing, but, you know, the best fight the best i love the fight i don't care what anybody says that's the fight to make i don't give a <laughs> and i won't say this one thing only because it's part of combat sports jake paul versus andrew tate i love it i love it call me a casual call me blah 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 i don't care you need to put ass in the damn seats and what a better way than the top g and the problem child fighting in a boxing ring if I want to pick somebody just based on just what I've been seeing and everything, I got Jake Paul. He's active. He's been fighting boxing. He's been training boxing. Uh, he has the best trainers. All the resources. Been busting his ass for the past few years. Andrew Tate, yes, he uh, has the most more experience as far as fighting. But kickboxing, a little different than boxing. Uh, he is a little older. Um, I'm not sure if he's in fighting shape. Yes, he's in shape, but, you know, fighting shape is a little different. I, I seen, I think it was his last MMA fight and his last kickboxing fight. Just from just observation, like I said, I'm not a fighter. Don't come at me. Don't kill me. But he looked a little sluggish. He looked a little slow. He looked a little um labored in his, in, you know, in his technique. Who knows? Maybe he wasn't really taking it serious. He just, you know, picked the fight and just wanted to get in there. But, I mean, you cannot discredit what Jake Paul's doing, though. I'm going to be honest. I'm not one of these Jake Paul haters wanting to see him lose. I love what he's doing. He's bringing eyes to a sport. It takes some balls to get in the ring or in a cage. Like You, you cannot discredit what this man is doing. I, I'm not a Jake Paul hater. I actually support his stuff. It's entertainment at the end of the day. The Jake Paul and it's a silver fight it was actually pretty damn entertaining. Even from a casual standpoint. Even if you don't know boxing, it, it was a fun fight. And that's what we need, bro. This is a business. It's a business, bro. It's business. It's about money. You know, oh, what's best for the sport? What's best for the sport? You know what's best for the sport? Getting more eyeballs to the sport. That's what's best for the sport. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not mad at it. I love the fight. If that shit happens, I'm with Top G, though. I'm a, man, I'm a Top G rider. <laughs> the problem child, don't hate on the man. And by the way, shout out Hasbula. I just had to throw that in there. One last thing. Comment, like, and subscribe. Subscribe to the Stocked Up channel. We're going to get Stocked Up Wrestling. We're going to get Stocked Up MMA. We got the Stocked Up Podcast. Everything Stocked Up. We are killers. We are the best content creators on the damn internet. We are obsessive. We dedicating our lives now. We are constantly trying to think of new ideas, how to improve the content. Qualities up. Look at this. New camera. More content. The best personalities on the internet why not subscribe it's free a like is free you don't, it don't really take much effort if you watch this if you made it all the way here might as well right you like the video if you made it all the way this far subscribe you know just just, just hit the button please <laughs>